Ah, oh, it's the most wonderful time of the year, isn't it? It's time to recount all of the makeup that failed us this year. And we've got a lot to go through today. So typically the way that this works on my channel is I just go through all of my collection and all of my videos from last year and I just talk about, I'm just throwing one more in there for good measure. I just talk about the reasons that they failed me specifically if you have a delicate sensibility today and you aren't in the mood to hear somebody just complain. Humorously and hyperbolically at times, but nonetheless, you know, I have received comments in the past being like, does she like anything? It's, it's a fails video. It's a fails and regrets video. And this is mainly useful for people catching up on my channel and or just loving to relive the year with me who, you know, wanna know my thoughts on what I would recommend passing on, especially because there's a lot of beauty out there. A lot of these things that I'm recommending passing on are very expensive and I would love to save you some money if I can. So let's go ahead and jump in. I feel like the first thing that I want to go ahead and touch on and get it out of my system, just to kick it off with a bang, is everything from Simi Hayes. Mainly though, the things that are like wildly overpriced, but the thing that seemed to be okay with everybody that tried it was just this little blush combo and like, fine, whatever. A broken clock is still right twice a day. Like, you know, it's bound to happen, but most of this stuff is overpriced, boring formulas in excessive packaging that is just completely overstating its purpose. If you haven't watched that video, I highly recommend doing so if you need a little bit of catharsis because it's very, very good for that. You get a little secondhand catharsis because you kind of just watch my diplomacy drain from my body through the course of the video. And by the end, I'm just like throwing things at the wall. So <laughs> it's a fun one. It's a fun one if you don't take me too seriously. Plus the comments on that video, absolute gold. Someone was talking about the Simi Hayes twins having face transplants. I was rolling. Y'all are so funny. You're funnier than I am. Okay, let's talk about a couple of luxury eye palettes. I bought a couple of Dior Quints this year and I took one of them back. It was, I never returned things. It was the New Look palette and Hope Miss Tom did the best job describing the issue with this one. Amanda makes it look amazing, but the issue that I had with it, I'll just see it on the screen, is that they all look the same. <laughs> there might be like one shadow in there that you can get to make it work, but the rest of it is just kind of all charcoal colored. <laughs> they all look exactly the same. They're the same value, the same kind of like sooty desaturated color, which is a useful color, but I don't want everything in a quint that's $65 to look like that. It's just, it's silly. It's just not my thing. And I was actually very excited about this one. This is the Five Colors Couture Eyeshadow Palette. This is the Golden Bouquet Quint. And these, I am sad to report, are also all the same with the exception of this one right here in the middle. I really don't know what the optimal use case for this is, like what they're recommending doing, because outside of the deepest shade right here, which is a wild depth leap from even the darkest <laughs> of the four on the outside, it's the only one that's not shimmery. And so these all have shimmer in them. And so they're like, I don't know, implying that you're supposed to use shimmer everywhere and then just like, what, like that's your eyeliner? I don't know. I was actually hoping that when I got it in my hands, it would make more sense. There would be some different textures some things would look, lots of times you end up with eyeshadows that look different in the pan than they do on your skin. And I was hoping to find a hidden gem, you know, something that just looked boring, but actually was just incredible and like life solving, you know? And I, again, regret to report to you, but also save you $65. Dior just like cannot get it together on these quints. That's all I can figure at this point. It's kind of like the Tom Ford quads. I'm like, you're gonna charge me $89. I've bought three of them and I'm still just whelmed. I am just like bleh on them. So yeah, you know, another $65 bites the dust, but like, don't buy this. It's, it's boring and it's just boring. It's like not useful. Okay, here's the thing. And the reason that I'm never going to actually get a real septum piercing is that like my nose just seems to be funnel shaped. <laughs> 
as an old Italian woman, as I've always been, ever since I was born, I've been an old Italian woman. I just, my nose runs constantly. <laughs> this is just this little conduit for it. It's just, <laughs> it's just wet. <laughs> That's so gross. We'll see how long it lasts. Okie dokie. The other one, did I try this this year? I think that I did. So this is the Le Quatre Ombre. It's the four ombres. Blurry Mauve from Chanel. Another case of if you squint, they're all the same color. I mean, especially those, those two. And we're talking, I'm a color theory queen, okay? And like, yeah, I can observe the fact that those are technically different colors and technically different textures, but like, who cares? <laughs> if I have to look that closely at it, like, who is it for? Yeah. And plus, I would argue, and I would approach the bench and make the argument, that none of these is mauve, okay? The closest we get is this gray, but like that's still mauve, it is not. And I like wearing these kinds of colors. I love a good moody burgundy gray eye. If there was some difference in the depths of these, if we had something that was a highlight shade, something that was a really good deep contour shade, something that had some shimmer, something that had some pop, something that had something a difference between any of them. This could have been a home run, but as it is currently, I don't know if I'll ever buy another quad from Chanel. And I love a lot of their stuff, but I've been to Ulta many, many a time and just poked through their quads trying to find something to redeem it essentially. And just none of them appeals to me. They're all kind of like that. Let's talk about this recent release from Shantikai. So Shantikai put this out, I guess this is holiday and Beautiful package. I'm obsessed with this color. Like this is the color very near and dear to my heart that my grandmother painted everything in her house, her walls. And I guess you don't paint a couch, but like her drapes were this color. Her couch was this color. Like everything was this gorgeous, like desaturated green color. And it's so beautiful. And I love how opulent it looks with gold. And the packaging is not perfect. Not every one of these little thingies is inlaid properly. I got the whole collection and I was disappointed by the whole collection, but these were the two main ones. So the first one being the blush, First of all, I mean, I just don't like when anything that's that expensive arrives broken and then just continues breaking even after I've repressed it, but it doesn't matter because I'm never gonna use it again. So ugly because it broke. And also it's so shimmery, it's like impossible to use. There's almost no pigment to this blush. It is very much a highlighter. So in the context of the actual release, the highlighter is a highlighter. The powder is also a highlighter. It's extraordinarily shimmery. And then the blush is also a highlighter. So $350 later, I just have three highlighters. And then there's this, this crime against humanity. This is the Lip Crystal in Pink Opal. It only took me about 10 minutes of wearing this to realize that yes, oh wow, gorgeous, glitzy, amazing, it's covered in glitter, fantastic. Yeah, but the glitter comes off immediately and it crunches in your teeth all day. It's disgusting. Like get a glittery lip gloss. I don't need to pay this much. It was like $50. Are you kidding me, Sean Takai? You owe me money, okay? Peach owes me money. I am entitled to compensation on this. This is this is just it's a it's a crime. So yeah, um you put you put that on, it's got all these little lovely, you know, crystals in it, and they do, they crunch in your teeth like sand. So unwearable, unusable, gross. Shouldn't shouldn't have shouldn't have passed muster and gotten out to the public. Next, I am feral today. Apparently, I I don't know. I've just completely run out of sane. I want to talk about some complexion products. We're gonna talk about some foundation. So first of all, absolutely not. No. Okay. Now maybe someone in a completely different skin category than me, skin type, skin color, skin undertones, temperature, what have you could find a shade that matched you in this. This is the new reformulation of the Makeup Forever HD Skin. Everybody's got their misgivings about this because they loved the older version of it. And apparently they like bumped up the fragrance in this and now it's got alcohol in it, blah, 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 whatever. I can learn to appreciate a texture even if the ingredients aren't ideal. Like I can at least speak to the quality and wear time of something even if the ingredients aren't ideal. Fragrance, what have you. This 
is so awful looking on me. It is so ugly and I bought it, I returned it so that I could get properly shade matched in store, bought that shade and it still looks like crap on me, okay? It oxidizes like crazy. So you can see that's a really pretty neutral color sitting there in the bottle. Looks like it's going to be ideal. It oxidizes, it's gross. And yeah, the scent doesn't bother me. I don't really care about that. I really wish that it like looked okay. I would like to have a good HD foundation in my repertoire, but this is just not it and it was just not what I expected at all and there was nothing I could do to make this work. Nothing I could do to make it work. And if you are complected like me, like my skin tone and also like dry skinned, don't do it. There are lots, that is one of the beauties of the beauty industry currently. Yes, we are completely awash in products, but that means that you do not have to settle and spend your money on something that is this finicky and weird. Just don't do it. I don't know if y'all know this about me, but like I'm very passionate about complexion products and that's why there are a lot in the fails, but there will also be a lot in, in the wins. So stay tuned for that, you know, later on. Anyway, next, House Labs. I adore her powder products. She's done some really cool stuff that has come out this year. And I don't even want, I don't even want to talk about the lip milkshake thing. Is what is a milkshake? I don't think that that's what it's called. People have had their feelings on that. It didn't work for me. It did this gooey gross thing around my mouth and I didn't, I just didn't like the way it looked that much anyway. And it was really uncomfortable to wear. It just wasn't for me. This I feel some solid foundations in not recommending. So this is the House Labs Triclone Skin Tech Foundation, the hopes that I had, especially because this does have claims about being like really flexible for your skin type and having like a really beautiful kind of, you know, luminous natural finish and stuff. Again, I wanted something super perfected. I was just very eager to get the, the Lady Gaga of it all. But this had two huge, flaws to it. One, and you know, I want to do an entire video series on color theory. I just don't think it's going to perform very well. And it's a lot of work for something that's not going to perform very well. Nonetheless, I understand the idea of their color wheel that they used for skin tone matching. Their idea was basically to have it the opposite of what you are, which is annoying and weird. But regardless, they had this color wheel, wheel, a wheel, where they were talking about your skin tone needing to match to the like opposite color. So if you were warm, you needed to go over to like the, it, if you called yourself warm, it was more of a, like a, a, you need coolness to like balance your skin out or something. It was, it was all opposite. I think I could understand that if it were like blush or eyeshadow or depending on what it was, lipstick maybe even, that you, whatever it was you were actually trying to like account for, but we're not color correcting on a foundation. We're matching. There's a difference. This is not a translucent thing that's supposed to just like, besides who's, why we're not correcting anyone's skin tone. You know, this like this needs warmth, needs coolness. For what? For who? To bring it back to what? Your ideal neutral? That's, no. Foundation doesn't need to be correcting someone's skin tone with the opposite temperature. That doesn't make sense. Match it to their neck. Match it to their chest. It has to be matched to your skin. That's the point. It's paint that goes on your face. It's supposed to look like your skin, not a corrective color. How did this get past muster? Anyway, the other thing is I just don't like the finish of it. For me, it wore really heavily. It was in this kind of like rash of releases where it, it, they all felt like these really half-baked textures of foundations and this was one of them. It was just like memorably difficult to wear. And I think it oxidized too. Either way, I got neutral. So there shouldn't have been any kind of that like voodoo in trying to, you know, match me to the opposite color or whatever. And it was still wildly wrong, yellow colored. So anyway, I got one tin light neutral. Like that is me in a nutshell. And it just was not, it was not good. The whole thing just wasn't good. But like, you know, orders of magnitude here, it didn't ruin my life. Like this ruined my life. Like this is disappointing and I spent my money on it, but I don't feel like I deserve financial compensation the way that I do about the Chantecai lipstick, you know? Next. 
I feel like we were all over a barrel on this one. We were just like, I want to understand what Patrick Ta was thinking. I want to see the vision, you know? Kelly did that video recently where it was like, makeup I would recommend my worst enemy. And then I did it. And then Angelica did it. And she talked about this and she put it in absolutely no uncertain terms. She was like, yeah, I would recommend this to my worst enemy because it's gonna go on beautifully and then it's going to look like you are a wax figure and your face is melting off. Because she does have oilier skin and even though I have dry skin and even though this didn't melt off of my face literally, it still never set down. So yeah, this is the Patrick Ta Cream Foundation and Finishing Powder Duo. I don't get it. Look at look at this like sludgy thing that it did in the pan because it's so silicone-y. It's got so much silicone in it that it it's molten all the time. There's no transformation on the skin. It's like it's just it's like it's over designed. It's the foundation equivalent of something being over designed. And the idea of putting the powder in there it's a nice idea, but the problem is that this is so molten, it's so wet, that when you put powder on it, it just soaks it up and looks gross. They don't work together. So yeah, I had really high hopes for this and it just was really sludgy and nasty. And I love everything else from Patrick Ta, honestly. And this just was not it. Okay. I have more, I have more foundation products. So next is the Janessa Myricks Yummy Skin Serum Foundation. So this is another case of expectations versus reality. This being called a serum foundation, not technically false, but I think we were all expecting, I don't know, I've never tried the Surratt like dewdrop foundation or whatever, but like that's what this seems like it's going to be. And it is oh so wildly pigmented it's basically the way that i described it and granted i got the wrong shade that's on me but the main thing that struck me about this having tried denessa meyer's products before she was at sephora was that this is the vision cream cover just slightly thinned out and honestly not thinned out enough to be a different product it just feels exactly like it but it does have a really strong fragrance. <laughs> like there are fragrances and then there are fragrances, you know, and this one's like kind of whoa. It smells better than the Yummy Skin, just the serum that she made, the primer, because that one's tutti fruity and this one's like, I don't know, it's a little bit more like sexy floral. The thing about this was just that it missed the mark on needing to be something new and innovative, which is what we were all expecting for all the hype that was around it. And what it actually was, was adapting a different formula that she had already made and making it more like a one ounce bottle of foundation to be sold on the shelves at Sephora. And I just felt like it was a miss. It was a product that never really needed to exist and I wish that it would have been translated into like a concealer because that's what this really is, is a concealer. And then let Janessa Myricks do what she does best, which is make gorgeous, innovative textures. She's an incredibly creative mind. I think she could have convinced us all to adapt our routines to the Vision Cream Cover, which is a $22 little vial of the most incredible, hyper-concentrated complexion product. We didn't need to, try to cover the distance, adapting that to what people would expect at Sephora and not really even getting there. It's sort of this like halfway in between trying to please everybody product and it, it ends up not really pleasing anybody because I think that anybody who would find this useful would find the Vision Cream Cover more useful. Disappointing. I was hoping for like a new product from her because I love, I love her mind, you know, but it was just, it was kind of more of the same. This is the Hermes Pline Air, which is just such a great name. Good grief. <laughs> I said it just now and I'll say it again. There's a sense and then there's sense. This one's a scent, holy moly. Yeah, so I saw that Hermes had makeup and I was like, what? And I was like, I'll spend $85 on a whim and try that. Boy, is this unremarkable. What a, what a dumb little product. I mean, they literally didn't go any further than saying, let's snap, snap, let's slap the word Hermes on an otherwise drugstore bottle of foundation 
<laughs> and charge somebody, you know, an arm and a leg for it. It's got titanium dioxide, 12.4% in it. BFD. It's just like the most boring, underwhelming, non-luxurious little vial of skin tint I've ever used. If this is what you're in the market for, get the Rare Beauty one. This is technically a sunscreen, so this is the Ilia C Beyond Triple Serum SPF 40. Another product that I feel like didn't need to exist <laughs> because we already had the Super Serum Skin Tint, which is like beloved. You know, everybody loves that product. It's so good. It's just that perfect dewy skin tint where if you want to look like a, you know, sun-kissed Hailey Bieber, you know, donut skin goddess, it's gonna do that for you. And then they're like, you know what we should do? We should make it four shades instead of whatever 30 those are and we're just gonna call it a sunscreen and make it really hard to use. So it comes in this in this pumpy guy right here. And when you put this on, it comes in four shades, which is, you know, cause it's a sunscreen, right? So, but it's SPF 40, which is in the US, the same thing that the other one is. I think that they were trying to account for the fact that like, most zinc oxide based sunscreens leave a white cast and so they were trying to make them in four shades so that they left a more skin like cast you know but the product itself is incredibly finicky and when there was a sort of general consensus of pushback after the release of this product from you know the masses they were like it's pilling up under everything it's pilling up under nothing it's just pilling up when i put it on they were like you have to shake it well and then pat it into your skin and i was like no i won't be doing that i'll be using my tula sunscreen and putting my makeup on on top like a normal person i'm not going to be patting a finicky sunscreen on this just never needed to exist so many disappointing complexion products Next, this is the Westman Atelier Vital Skin Care Complexion Drops. I will just distill that entire review down for y'all because, you know, I love the Vital Skin Foundation stick. I love it, I love it, I love it. And, you know, she put out not only a skin tint, but a skin tint that is like wildly radiant, like wildly, wildly luminous. It's basically got like, <laughs> I think it's like, third ingredient is mica or something. Like it's just this beautifully, look at it. Look at the way the light hits it. It's like, it's like a mirror. It doesn't have really any technology in it. Plus it smells like fry oil. It smells like fry oil. It's, mm, I don't like that smell. I don't like it. The first ingredient in here I think is squalene. Squalene is a balancing oil for oily skin types. And people like me, who have a desert skin type, an arid climate, if you will. I happen to have this issue with squalene where it just kind of like doesn't sink into my skin. <laughs> like they meet and they go, I'm sorry, we, uh, we don't speak the same language. <laughs> We're not going to be able to communicate without some help. And so it just sits there and it slides around and it's really weird. And when I have said that, people are like, well, you're only supposed to use three drops of it. And I'm like, well, to be fair, three drops of anything is fine. Three drops of anything is probably fine. It's imperceptible. But like, what if I want to wear a little bit more of that? So yeah, we're kind of stuck between like, it doesn't perform unless you don't put any on. <laughs> So I can't recommend it. Cannot abide those kinds of restrictions. I need to find a tissue that doesn't smell like fry oil. Okay, hey, let's talk about the other thing that I didn't like from Westman Atelier that was $75. This is the Vital Pressed Skincare Powder. Again, came with like, you know, a whole list of caveats. The biggest one being like, don't use it under your eyes. And I was like, then what's it for? Like. I mean, I get it. I'm not, I'm not an idiot. I know there are other places on your face that you powder, but like, I'm not paying $75 for a freaking pow. I mean, I did. I did. You did khaki. I'm talking to, I'm talking to my monitor. I did do that, but I would not recommend paying $75 for a powder that you're not, you're only supposed to use on parts of your face. 
that doesn't make any sense to me. And it does come in colors. So, I mean, some of the other colors might be different, but this is the one that I did. And they have one that's like bubble pink. I didn't want to do that either. I don't want pink face. That's not what I'm in the market for. But yeah, there are lots of powders that look like this that work flawlessly on every part of my face. The Cover FX one, you know, if you still remember who Cover FX is, the Curewise one, the... Ilia one. Y'all, the point is there are so many white powders that you can use all over your face if you're pale like me and they don't gather in every single line. For something that is supposed to solve your routine, which is what Westman Atelier sets out to do, they make these very luxurious, feels like a jewel, you know what I mean? Feels like something that belongs in your jewelry box. They're just so commoditized, you know? For it to be so conditional that I get any use out of it at all, no thank you. Yep. Yep. Oh. We're going in. No one is safe from this, okay? I asked to receive some gifting through one of my affiliate partners from Say, and I honestly think that they found out who I was and they said, nope, we don't send anything to her. She is not nice. <laughs> because I have been honest about Say from the start, okay? Their blushes are good. And that's all I gotta say about that. Let's talk about this powder right here that everybody loves. This is the Say Airset Radiant Loose Setting Powder in Translucent. Let me repeat that. This is in the shade Translucent. Not on any planet is that translucent. That is yaller. And when it goes on my skin, it's yaller and it just stays yaller and it gets yaller it, it there's it, it's just too dark it's too dark to be a translucent color don't call it translucent call it fair medium light medium whatever call it what it is you don't have to reformulate it just don't trick me into buying it by calling it trans lucent okay <sighs> let me write a lot i told you i was gonna get lit up no one is safe, no one is safe, la 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 la. I bought these with my own money. So this is another brand that doesn't ever want to send me PR. <laughs> and honestly, like, I don't think that this, any of these products is bad. It's, they're just overblown. Like we're just talking about products because they're like in pretty packaging that markets itself to millennials who want to feel rich, you know? But like, other than that, these are really unremarkable formulas. So I've heard so many pleasant things to say, right? About this Merit bronzer. I have it in the shade either Quince or Quince. First of all, that happened the moment I opened it. I'm sorry, like all of the fantasy of using a product goes away if it comes broken, like full stop. And this happened to a lot of people. Now, a lot of people told me they reached out to Merit and Merit, like no questions asked, just replaced it. So, I mean, I think that they're nice people. They're nice people. But this is like, just not this bro. It's called a bronzer. And it doesn't bronze, okay? Because like you put it on like that and I just rub the crap out of it on myself like that. And then when you blend it, where did it go, fam? Where did it go? And you know what? There's a customer for that, it just isn't me. It's too dewy to really go on any powdered face of makeup, but it's not enough visual impact to wear with a dewy face of makeup. It slides around too much. And I found every single time that I tried to get use out of this, every, t I mean, I put it in like three different videos with three different types of faces of makeup. Every single time I ended up going back and putting like, <laughs> I think a couple of times I was like, I don't think I put bronzer on and like going in and trying to do it with a different bronzer because I literally forgot I put it on because it just disappears. If you're really, really, really pale and what you're looking for is a, a virtually barely there kind of bronzer, then, you know, maybe it would work for you. I'm not going to say it's a horrible product. It just it doesn't, it doesn't have any like visible impact to me. And I also just, I don't know, the magic just wasn't there for me. The packaging is chintzy. You know, it feels kind of like uh, Milani. And like, I don't want to pay merit prices for Milani and it to all fall apart. Like it just feels half baked to me and it just wasn't worth the money. Now the packaging on this is exquisite, is it not? I think 
that that's half the reason anybody likes it. So this is the Merit Signature Lip Lightweight Lipstick. I got the shade Fashion because it was the one that appealed to me the most. I still think it's a beautiful color, okay? But everybody told me when I gave this a bad review that I bought the wrong color. There should not be a wrong color in a formula, okay? Especially a lipstick. Like, I could see, oh, it's too dark or it's too light. Like maybe it doesn't look good on you or something, but the performance of a product should not change shade to shade, okay? That, that is not, that's not the answer to me. So either way, I found that the color actually looked pretty nice on me, but the infinite manipulability of this formula is so frustrating. There is no, ideal coverage level of it, ideal opacity or saturation level of it. You put it on and then you mash your lips together and it pulls part of it off. That's nice if you're going for a blotted look, but then it doesn't stay at the blotted level either. And they're just like, oh, it's infinitely buildable and flexible and you can wear it at any level. Yes, but it doesn't stay at any of them. It won't make a decision. And none of the colors is particularly desaturated. Like, yes, this is one of the more saturated ones, but honestly, that just calls into question the quality of the formula to begin with. I feel like it just, you know, puts it on display and like that's their fault. So yeah, I just found this to be incredibly frustrating, especially because, ooh boy, is that a pretty, pretty package? It's real heavy. It's so nice, but like, I don't understand the appeal, y'all. There are so many better, better lipsticks out there than this. And this was, a lot of people thought I was an idiot. Like, they just thought I was being so ridiculous for saying this, but I hate this shape. I hate this weird, like the, the cross section cut off of it is wider at the top instead of being narrow. And so it's like, you just, you feel like you're putting it on with this big fat finger, you know? And it's just like, there's no precision to it at all. I told y'all it was gonna be like this. I'm probably going to crap all over your favorite product today. Here's another one. Okay, so while I have seen like one person make this work, this is the Chanel Le Beige Water Fresh Blush. And I wanna mention it alongside the complexion touch, but I can't find it. I've looked everywhere, turned this room upside down and I can't find that little complexion touch, which is fine. The complexion touch is like the Water Fresh Tint, except it has more pigment to the formula so it's still this you know kind of separated looking formula like this but that formula doesn't have enough presence to hold that much pigment and so it's it's just kind of everywhere it's it's molten it doesn't work i highly recommend doing the water fresh tint instead and i highly recommend doing the rose ink tint instead of that more shades less money and no fragrance this <laughs> Someone commented this and it looks like blood. <laughs> when I put it on in that video, they were like, ah, it looks like blood. So I got the only color that I was able to get my hands on, which is Intense Coral. And you know, it looks like that. It looks like it's gonna be kind of a nice, you know, rusty color. But oh, here's the freaking rub, okay? I, you know, take my finger or the little brush or whatever, and you know, I mix them together on the back of my hand before I put it on. But the problem is then the pigment deposits and the water part just kind of keeps swishing all over the top of it. And, and then it's like the part where the color actually deposited just kind of stains and then you can't move it around. And so it's like, you know, I wipe it off of my hand and I end up with this like stain left behind, like here and here where it initially deposited, especially the longer that you leave it on. And you can't like, there's, it's completely unpredictable because it never completely mixes together. It makes it feel like this formulation, this little, you know, the suspension thing being in a serum and what have you, which is fine if it works, but in this case, it makes it feel like a gimmick because it doesn't work, so. Don't buy it. Another blush that disappointed me is this. This is the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer Blush. I'm not gonna spend too long on this because I have absolutely harped on it all year long. I was so excited about these. I bought three of them. They all dry down too quickly. They're very, very difficult to use, especially in the context of how beloved all of the Laura Mercier skin tints are. There are so many great tinted moisturizers from Laura Mercier brand and this just didn't, it just, it didn't fall on the same side of the gene pool. It's just too finicky and weird. And it's a shame because the colors are gorgeous and I have just, you know, full tubes of them. 
they just don't work. They're super frustrating in a world of so many liquid blushes. Go get you a Maybelline cheek heat, okay? I've been like avoiding this. I like don't even want to talk about it because I feel like I talked about it so recently. So this is the Chantecaille. <laughs> it's starting to show the wounds of how much I'm beating up on it. This is the Chantecaille anti-aging face tint. The ways that I have tried to get this to work is this jiggly wiggly universal skincare product that's supposed to be just kind of a, you know, put it on your face, it's gonna just gently bronze you or whatever and make everybody look healthier. There's no such thing as universal and it just didn't work on me and it was hot orange, okay? It would have to be somebody who already is pretty warm toned for this to look like it was enhancing your skin and I am not warm toned enough for it and it, lo it looked like I went to the drugstore and bought the wrong color bronzer or the wrong color of self tan. And I just said, I don't care, Lego. <laughs> and that, you know, is like 65, $68 later. So there's that. Okay. Um, I'm about to, I'm about to shock everybody. Honestly, this isn't that shocking because Papagraph put out all of those gorgeous divine blush without caution blushes, right? And this is still called blush without caution. <laughs> I would say blush with caution. These are the duos that she came out with this year. And this is Venusian Sunrise. I was very excited about this because you know, it's kind of a twofer, right? It's like, oh, if you can, you know, wedge a brush into one side or the other, you can get those colors and then you can mix them together and get something else that's really beautiful and whatever. And I am absolutely in love with the first release, okay? The first blush without caution, divine blush, whatever the heck, love it so much. I live and die by flirtatious. I love them. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful formula, but I will admit they might be a little bit fair. They're just all kind of on the fair side. And so these coming out didn't necessarily surprise me because I feel like she did kind of owe the deeper skinned people a little more saturated blush. But at the same time, I mean, she swung all the way to the other end of the spectrum. These are so, so wildly pigmented. And I would argue if you have a deep skin tone, if you're very melanated, Regardless, I would argue that this is actually a disagreement between this like vivid saturation and how kind of pale the colors are. So you're going to take this like lavender that I don't care how vivid it is, how neon it is, it still has an ashy quality that is going to look kind of dusty on melanated skin. And then that's a bit too vivid for me to wear. So like I put these on and I was like, ah, especially comparing them to the previous release. I think that a lot of people were expecting and some people even spoke about them as if these were going to be kind of like a really good deal if you couldn't decide between two in the last release and that is not the case at all. They are so wildly bright and vivid. They're just packed with color and it just was very odd in the context of someone telling me to blush without caution, okay? Blush with caution. All right, let's do some lip products here. I wanna talk about these, honestly, more time than they deserve because these are the most forgettable things. This is kind of one of those things that like, it stuck out to me because I don't feel like I gave it enough time talking about it on my channel, but it's also going to be something that like, the next time you see it, it's going to be me decluttering them because what? So why, why? Why are there so many brands out there putting out forgettable products like this? And then there are brands that are putting out really iconic products that just get lost in the wash. Aether Beauty, I'm sorry. Like Aether Beauty is out there putting out these really iconic products and they just, they just don't get enough attention. And then Cali Ray is out here like, what are these? They are drug store basic lip glosses for what, for whomst and why. That's all, that's all I got. I have so little patience for someone being like, new, exciting, new releases. And then I get it in my hand and I'm like, it's a nothing. It's a nothing burger. It's a blotduct. <laughs> okay, next, completely other end of the spectrum. I have to hand it to her. Jess, what is her last name? Oh no. Jess Hunt. Jess Hunt, that is her name, who owns Refi. She is out here trying to Swiss Army knife 
every single component on the market, okay? Your product has a comb with it? Well, guess what? <laughs> Mine's got two combs and a little thingy and a product inside of it, and that's only one of four of my brow products. You know what I mean? Like, is it trying to simplify your routine or is it just trying to like make you feel like a spy? Like they all make me feel like a spy. So, oh, well that's, that's fun. This is their Fry Lip product that she put out this year and it is called Lip Sculpt. This is one of the weirdest things I've ever seen in my life. Okay, so you start out with this taupe lip crayon, okay? This this lip liner. And it is waxy on the level of the the one that we don't talk about, the, the Kosa's lip liners that they pulled pretty much immediately because like they just they just go on like you know? It spreads for like a second and then it just freezes down and like that's all you get. Plus I said it before, I'll say it again. On what planet is that taupe? That is not taupe. That is a rosy tan at best. Khaki lip liner blended. Look how much more neutral that is. And I don't even claim that that's taupe. It's more of a coffee color, you know? Taupe is cool. Taupe has blue in it, you know? And um, that's l'orange, okay? That was the coolest toned, lightest one in the entire collection. And then, oh no, that's not all, folks. We have this this strange plastic paddle. And you're supposed to use that to seal down your lip liner. Cause that's something that the industry demanded. I will quote in Yolika, who asked for this? What this does is it puts this like space sealant on your lips where nothing moves ever again. But it doesn't matter because that lip liner wasn't going anywhere in the first place. So it, none of it really works unless what you're looking for is one line around your lips and then for it to never move again. It's so strange and unnecessary and it, it sucks because I know that, you know, there's someone who's behind the scenes investing R&D dollars and putting these things together and someone really like cared about this product being made and I'm just sitting here being like, I don't get it. I don't get it. But I feel particularly emboldened to say so because when I mentioned it, there were people in my comments who agreed. There were people in my comments who were like, I bought that. That doesn't make any gosh darn sense. That was one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever put on my mouth, so. This doesn't really fall into a category necessarily, but in the context of this entire video series of the end of the year, you know, I'm doing my roundups, I feel like this needs to go at the bottom of the pile because there are so many better products than this that do this. So these are the Depixum Cosmetic Emulsions, ultimate performance. And this was a TikTok made me buy it thing. Someone sent me a tutorial where a girl did her entire makeup look with this and I was like, awesome. I would love to be able to like sit here and actually demonstrate color theory with y'all and like do my makeup that way, first of all. That's really hard, and the girl who did it deserves a medal, okay? <laughs> like, it's really, really, really hard to mix your own colors from scratch. I can sit here and identify them and tell you which ones are cooler and which ones are warmer and whatever, but like, whoo, mixing complexion colors from just basic primaries, wildly difficult, way harder than I thought it would be, so either way, kudos to the TikToker who did it because like, she deserves it, she deserves all of the virality and whatever because she performed an act of magic. But these are very unsophisticated formulas, especially in the context of something like, uh, you know, a Hindash color fluid or the About Face uh, matte eye paints. There are some really phenomenal ultra pigmented paint them on your face kind of things that, you know, act intuitively, this is not one of them. And when it dries down, it dries down like acrylic paint. They send they send these little palettes with them. They're like these little uh, metal trays and a little wooden stick for you to use. And if you don't wipe them out, this thing is going to dry down immediately and you are not going to be able to use that little metal tray ever again. It becomes like a solid plastic. So I don't really know what I'm putting on my face. 
just objectively, but uh, either way, there are more sophisticated things than this, and they were expensive, so. I get it for like, um, you know, special effects or something, but it is not a cosmetically elegant delivery system or formula. By the way, if you wanna know what's on my eyes, I'm gonna list it down below, but you're gonna be like, well, which one? I was editing and I just kept going. I started with the Make It By Mario palette, and then I went in with Rose Metals, and then I went in with Smoky Quartz from Charlotte Tilbury, and then I went in with Mink from Victoria Beckham, and then I went in with YSL <laughs> Sequin Crush in Confident Nude. That might be it, but it's a lot. And there are also several eyeliners happening here. That is why what you're looking at right now doesn't seem to make any real sense but it also works. It's just layers and layers and layers of very high quality shimmery things. Speaking of high quality shimmery things that layer, this isn't one of them. This is the Bare Minerals Mineralist Cozy Chalet palette and I feel like this rolled out of like 2014. They were like, makeup! Y'all like makeup, right? Have a makeup. That's what this is. This is a makeup. These are, this is just the most random little palette. This is from an era when we just didn't have good formulas yet and we would have been like, neat, makeup. It's the most underwhelming palette of underwhelming uh, that I've ever used. And, and that doesn't even necessarily mean that, you know, you need to be somebody who's just a texture fiend to like appreciate something that's like this, but better. There are plenty of other products out there that have great mattes that perform really beautifully and have really usable shimmers that don't have wild textures or anything like that that are very blendable. Check out an Aether palette. Certainly, certainly you can find a color story that's a little tighter than that. Certainly you can find formulas that are a little more exciting and better performing than that. It's just weird. It's a weird choice. I won't spend too long on this because y'all know how I feel, but I, you know, I've already talked to Carissa about this and I just confirmed with her, I was like, I just, I think that y'all should release all the colors that you've come out with in the Infinity Waterproof, Waterproof eyeshadow stick and just transfer them over <laughs> to the uh, Brilliant Eye Brighteners because the Brilliant Eye Brightener is just such a beautiful, easy and intuitive formula. And while someone might be able to get this thing to work, it's just not intuitive, it's not easy to use. So yeah, um, that's all. And finally, I don't know why I saved this for last. What a weird thing to save for last. Well, that's okay, because I'm not gonna end on a really horrible note. This is just a weird one. I liked the Natasha Denona My Dream Collection on the whole, but this was just such, I mean, like, especially from the standpoint of like someone actually going, like someone, not me, going and buying makeup. I feel like, you know, you could very easily get like swept up in the fantasy and be like, oh, it's a collection. Okay, but like this, is just this is this is not something anyone needs to go spend their money on this is this little highlighter palette thing and mine came broken which I admit always kind of you know starts me off on a bad foot puts a bad taste in my mouth and it's this kind of like cream to powder thing which I like I do like this but then we have and I know that this is a Natasha Denona technique but I can't get it to work. And it is this very slick, very different from this one, cream highlight that is very, 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 very iridescent. And then on top of that, a highlighter to put literally on top of that, I guess. So like, I just, I guess I don't understand why we needed why we needed that. And then especially for somebody who has a skin tone where the My Dream palette would work on you because it's not particularly deep across the board. It's kind of this desaturated mauve kind of shade. Like, those two people are not the same customer. This is too dark for me to use as a highlighter and this is a pretty good blush, you know? It's a pretty good blush. I just wish that they would have been separated out or something because it's like two thirds of it is just entirely unusable for me and it causes me to not reach for it at all, which is a shame because this is actually a pretty cool and innovative little formula right here and the whole My Dream palette while the collection, while her eyeshadow formula is not my absolute, you know, first choice. 
I do still like get excited about that palette and I do still like appreciate somebody dedicating an entire collection to truly my favorite color to wear, which is this, you know, desaturated mucky mauve. So yeah, I think that it's more, I was, this is a fail more because I had such high hopes for it. And I was really hoping that like her innovative technique was going to like open a door for me and make me think differently about the way that I use makeup, which is my favorite way to feel about anything that I use. And it, it, you know, expectations were up here and I had an equal and opposite reaction. So those, wow, those. It's always weird when I finish one of these videos because it feels like there's so much leading up to it. It's like, that was it. Yeah, those are my fails so far. I'm saying so far in case I come across some other things and we do a follow-up video or something, but those I think are all of my fails from 2022. And mainly this is just a cautionary tale. If you find that my recommendations tend to work for you, then I would not risk it for the biscuit on any of those products because your money is important and there's a lot of makeup out there, okay? If you already have these products and you can make them work, don't throw them out just because I don't like them. Don't let that taint your experience, okay? But it's more about like if you're, you know, deciding between one thing and another or deciding between that thing and nothing, it, I would definitely save your money by not buying any of these. So I hope you'll enjoy this. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you made it to the end of the video, make sure you definitely subscribe, like especially on this one because we're entering my series at the end of the year, which I, depending on how many products there actually are, I might, you know, spread it out to more than one, like best of the best or something. Last year we did a best of the best and an honorable mentions. So I might do that again. And we just got all kinds of stuff that we need to round up. We're gonna do some declutters and everything. So it's a really good time to subscribe, put my notifications on because these videos take a long time to make sometimes, especially like the declutters or like the longer form ones. And so, you know, they get uploaded at weird times of the day sometimes. So make sure that you have your little notification bell on so that you know if you want to watch them right when they come out and, you know, have the reminder. So yeah, thank you all for watching. I will put a video that I have chosen specifically for you right here. And I hope that y'all keep watching. Throw this a like if you liked it. I love y'all so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.